Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a video on how to get sharper looking images. And this is a question that I've been asked quite a numerous amount of times over the last couple of years while I've been on YouTube. And there's a lot of different ways to get sharper looking images. Uh, Obviously, there's a lot of effects you can use in Photoshop to sharpen your images, and I will go into those later in this video. But first off, I just want to talk about some of the other ways that you can help get sharper looking images straight out of camera. I think first off, it's really important to get to know your lenses pretty well. So, I know, for example, with my 85mm lens, it doesn't have the greatest autofocus mode. So, I actually like to shoot with that particular lens on manual quite a lot of the time which I don't always do because my eyesight is not great and I do find it hard to focus but specifically for that lens I do find it is better to use manual mode and to focus myself. With that I tend to be a little bit slower in taking images on my 85. I do like to look back at the screen quite a bit and to zoom in on the photo, make sure it is sharp. It's probably a good idea to do that with um, a lot of photos anyway because I don't know how many times I've come home from a shoot and I've had my mode on auto and just been clicking away and pretty much not realized that half the photos, if not all of them, are out of focus. And that really sucks, especially when you're taking closer up portraits or portraits that are um, really requiring quite a bit of sharpness around the face and the eyes in particular. And when it's not sharp, it's really annoying because there's not much you can do if it's quite out of focus to correct that once it's been taken so I think the important thing is to make sure when you're on the shoot and you're actually taking the images make sure that the photos are sharp then in camera or as sharp as they can possibly be and get to know your lenses quite well because for a lot of my lenses autofocus is fine and usually a lot of them will work better than me manually focusing them but I know with a couple specifically my 85 it is a little bit harder to get a better focus out of it on auto and I do like to use manual and just take my time with it a little bit more and making sure that it's sharp. In saying that as well, it's always good to make sure the eyes are sharp. If the eyes are sharp, this is what I've been told pretty much since um, I was studying photography and I guess it's just one rule that I do follow with photography quite often is trying to get the eyes sharp as possible because if they're not sharp, it does tend to throw the image off a bit. Obviously this rule can be broken at any stage and there's lots of different photos I've seen where the eyes aren't completely sharp and that's fine. But generally that's one of the rules you do tend to follow with, with getting sharp images. Another tip for getting sharper photos is to choose your f-stop or your aperture quite carefully. Uh, obviously if it's going to be on an f1.2 or an f1.8 it's a lot harder to get sharper photos. Generally, you won't be going for that effect anyway if um, in an overly sharp photo if you're looking at wider apertures or shooting with wider apertures. But in those circumstances, I think it's then that it's quite uh, important to have the eyes sharp, especially. If you've got a wider aperture, it is a lot harder. So I do tend to take a lot more time. Um, obviously, with my 85, that's f1.2, and I do like to use it at wider apertures a lot of the time. So that's... Also another instance where I do tend to take a lot of time in taking my images and making sure they're sharp in camera first because that's where it does get really difficult afterwards to try and sharpen them up in Photoshop and there's really not too much you can do once they're out of focus completely, um, <laughs> unfortunately. Another thing that does tend to affect images a lot when it comes to sharpness is your shutter speed. So. I usually like to have uh, quite a fast shutter speed when I'm outside shooting and Usually that'll help because I do tend to do a lot of movement shots as well or I'll get the model sort of mid movement, mid um, walk or, or something like that. And it does tend to help to have a little bit of a quicker shutter speed. So that's something important to remember as well when you are shooting. And that's obviously easier said than done in a, on a bright day. It's a bit harder when it's a really dark day but <laughs> I always like to remember that when I'm shooting as well. And now I'm going to show you guys a few different methods in Photoshop that can help to get some sharper looking images. Just a few tips and a few tweaking methods that I like to use in Photoshop and I hope you guys enjoy. So I've got my photo here now in Photoshop and I will admit that in terms of sharpening in Photoshop I wouldn't say that there's too much that I like to do to it in Photoshop because some of it can be a little bit destructive to the image and I think there are better ways to do certain things with using uh, separate layers and, and things like that. 
But I think if you can sharpen your image before it gets into Photoshop, that's even better. So I usually like to use Camera Raw when I'm importing my raw files to do sharpening and also in through Lightroom as well. They both have really good functions for sharpening and I usually find that um, it works really well in, in both programs. Now in Photoshop, as I said, there's not much that I like to do to the image specifically with sharpening, um, but there are a few tips and tricks that I have to maybe enhance things a little bit more. So there are the tools here under filter and under sharpen, and you've got sharpen, sharpen edges and sharpen more. I probably would never use any of the first three, um, just personal preference. And if I did have to, it would be on a separate layer because they can be quite destructive. Um, so I, I'm not a really huge fan of these. You can't really uh, choose a preference for how much you want to sharpen. It's just kind of like an automatic sharpen. Um, so I like having a little bit more control over how sharp my image looks. So there's definitely the option of smart sharpen or unsharp mask. Uh, both of those are quite good options, but having said that, I don't really use either one of those very often. I'd say the main way that I like to sharpen my images is by high pass. So I'm going to show you guys a quick tutorial on just how to do that now. So it's quite easy. You just duplicate this layer so you can just pull it into the new layer button. And then on the background copy, we go filter, other, high pass. And I usually always keep this at around 3.8 to 4, something around that sort of amount, maybe even a little bit more. And we'll press OK. And then we go down to our blending layers just down here and select that and click on Overlay. And now we have a little bit to work with. As far as control goes, we can change the opacity of the sharpen layer. So I'm just going to zoom in and show you guys what that has actually done. That's really sharpened up the image, probably a little bit too much. But I'm just going to click on the eye and show you guys how much that's actually sharpened the image. So it's made quite a big difference. And I think we're just going to lower the opacity on that so it's not as sharp. So I'm probably bring it down to like maybe around, maybe around 60% have added a grain to this image as well so it is picking up a lot of the grain and sharpening that as well so i personally love this technique of sharpening because i feel like it's one of the most non-destructive ways to do it it's done on a separate layer and i think it's just having a little bit more control over how sharp your images look i would always choose this method over any of the automated modes um, smart sharpen is okay and so is unsharp mask but I still prefer this method and I'd say 99% of the time this is how I do my sharpening in uh, Photoshop. But as I said before, if you can get it sharp in Lightroom or in Camera Raw first, that's always going to help, uh, help things and help the quality of things as well in your image. So I have done this tutorial several times before. And I'll put the links in the description below uh, to those other tutorials on sharpening. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed learning these sharpening methods from this video. Um, let me know if you thought it was useful in the comment section below and what else you'd like to see on my channel. Uh, but for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.